Okay, section 17, simulations with conditional prompt. Suppose you have two bags of marbles. The first bag contains six white marbles and four black marbles. The second bag contains three white marbles and seven black marbles. Now suppose you put the two bags in a box. If you close your eyes, grab a bag from the box, then grab a marble from the bag, what is the probability that it is black? It makes sense? Or yeah, probably that it's black. So what's the probability that you will choose bag one? That'll be one over two. Makes sense. And then you multiply that by the probability that you will choose black given that it's bag one, right? Because if um, once we pick the bag, we've narrowed our universe down. Uh, and then the probability of picking black will be from that. And then P choose bag plus the odds of choosing bag two, multiplying then by the odds of choosing black, given that we have bag two. So that seems pretty straightforward. All right, keep going. Yep. Run a simple simulation to estimate the probability of drawing a black, of marble in a particular color. Okay. So yeah, this was fun. Uh, you create dictionaries for bag one and bag two. Uh, they hold the marble color and the probability values. Then you create another dictionary for the box. Um, did this make sense to you guys? You want to walk over it or? Uh, yeah, let's walk over it. Okay. Yeah. So what they do is, okay, first they're going to have one dictionary and that's bag one. Um, the key is, all right, the, um, the marbles, that's just the, the name of the marbles, right? And they're going to store that as an array. They can either be black or they can be white. Um, then the second key of the bag dictionary is the probability. And then, in, again, it's the same sequence. Um, the probability of it being black is 4 out of 10, so that corresponds to the first element in this one. And then 6 out of 10 is the odds of getting white, which is the second one. Um, so then so they do the same exact thing in bag 2. For key marbles, they just put in the name of the color of the marble. And then for the probabilities, it's the same shaped array. And then the first member of that array is the probability of getting black. The second element is the probability of getting white. And then they just do a box dictionary where the key bags here, they store an array that just has bag one and bag two. Um, and then again, they do probabilities of those elements and each of them is in this array. The first is half and half because there's two bags there's an even chance of getting one or the other. So they do that, right? So that's how they're, they're kind of just sort of setting up their simulation for drawing a marble or a bag, um, or just, just drawing a random marble. So they're, they're just loading everything up uh, into the dictionary. Um, and sure enough, when you print this out, that's what you get. Um, the marble, the, the bag one dictionary has marbles black and white, and the probabilities are 0.4 and 0.6. That's, that's dictionary for bag two. It has black and white marbles, and the black marbles have a probability of 0.7, and the white have 0.3. And then the last one is, this dictionary is the, um, the box. And now what's happening is that the box dictionary contains, the first key is bags, right? Um, and up here we saw that in the bags key, they just added an array, and the array itself had bag one and bag two. And remember that these, are, these variables are referring to these dictionaries up here. So when they actually print it out, it just gets expanded out, where the first key has a value, which is an array, which in turn has uh, two dictionaries. The first one uh, is this one, and then the second one is this one, um, and then has the probabilities for each of them. And then the second key um, has the... It's just the probability between getting one bag or another. Yep, so that's the there's best. a 50 50 shot. Yep. So the first key is what it's referring back to is the probability. Like it's referring back to bags is the probability for that. Right. Okay. Yep. Yep. And then, and then these probabilities are for the marbles within each bag. So this prob here and this prob here, it's just a part of this array that they have here. Right there. Okay, it's just expanding out bag one and bag two. Um, so now we're going to create a function, sample marble box that randomly chooses a bag from the box and then randomly chooses a marble from the bag. Um, it uses this nifty little np.random.choice method. Um, 
And apparently in random choice, what you can do is you pass in, um, you know, the, the first parameter is the series of, ob of objects or elements from which you want to make a random choice, right? And then the second parameter is the probability of making, you know, each choice. And that's why when they were setting this up up here, they had these arrays that had the same shape. So marbles is the same. Sorry, give me a second. Yeah, so the first array, it's the same shape, black, white, probability, here, here. And the reason they did that was because, so that when they pass it in to random choice, you know, it's the same sequence. Random choice will assume that like, the position of like, you know, if it, if it randomly picks an element from the sequence that you pass into the first parameter, which in this case is box slash bags, um, and then, you know, that, that's going to be a list of two bags. And then if you pass in the probability parameter, it's also a list of two elements. And it's going to assume that if it picks the second bag, then the second probability in this parameter, that's going to be the probability of picking that bag. And that's sort of the core of like how that's working. Okay. Um, and then it does the same thing. So now that it has a bag, it again is going to do another mp.random.choice. This time it's going to pass in for, you know, the list of the sequence of elements from which to make a choice is going to be bag marbles. So it's going to, this is going to make it pick either black or white. It's going to choose randomly either black or white. And, and, and the odds of it picking black versus white will be determined by, you know, the second list that's passed in, which is the probabilities. So if np.random.choice picks a black marble, it will then, you know, it'll, it'll pick a black marble based on the probability that it finds passed into the, the first element in this list, if that makes sense. So black and then the probability is seven out of 10. So when you pass these two lists into np.random.choice, there's a seven, out of 10 chance that np.randomchoice will pick a black item. And there's a 310 that'll pick a white. Make sense? Yep. Cool. Create a function sample that random, we already did that. Okay, cool. So now, yeah, so when you create the function and then you just do, you know, you call the function sample marble box, you pass into it a box, which will be a dictionary containing one key for, um, I think the bags and then the second for the probability of pit picking each bag right? Um, and then once that box get passed into the function, it'll first choose a random bag from that box. It'll then choose a random marble from the bag that it chose in the first one. And that is how that function works. So now we're going to create another function that says probability of colors, color box num samples that gets a given number of samples from sample marbles and computes the fraction of marbles of a desired color. Okay. Probability of colors. Okay. Okay. All right. So that just seems to be, um, yeah, it's just going to repeat. It's just going to use this function that we made up here. It's going to make X number of random selections of marbles and then just, you know, tell you the, cal the calculate the probability based on what it observes after actually drawing all those samples out. Um, so here's our function probability of color. We're going to pass in the color that we want to pick or the color that we want to keep track of how many times we pick. Um, we're going to put in the box from which we draw the samples and then we're going to pass in the number of samples that we draw from that box. So marbles is equal to np.array and he, the, this is a list construction and what it is doing is sample marble box. Okay. So here we're, we're, we're pulling a marble. Remember that this is our sample marble method function. And what that does is it pulls a marble randomly. Um, based on the probabilities that get passed into it, right? When you pass the box into it. So we sample marble, we enter the box, it's going to pick either a black or a white marble, depending on whatever the, the probabilities are. And it's going to do that for ii in range number of samples. So it's going to pick, this is a list, it's constructing a list. It's going to pick um, number of sample times marbles from the box that get passed into sample marble. Once that gets into a list, np.array converts that to an array. Now we're just going to compute the fraction of marbles that we wanted to keep track of. So we wanted to see, all right, we're going to pull a thousand marbles from this box, and then we're going to calculate how many times we pull, let's say, a black one. And that's the color we pass in, because we want to see, all right, how many times do we end up pulling a black marble? 
uh, from this box. And all that does is np.sum where marbles equals color, right? That's pretty straightforward. Marbles is the, is the array that we generated that contains the list of all the random choices that we made a thousand times. And we want to find well, how many of those choices were the color variables that got passed in up here, which can probably be either black or white. Um, this returns a Boolean series. And when we sum that, it's just gonna add all of those up and get, tell you the number of times we picked either black or white, whatever we passed in from that thousand sample drawing. And then we're gonna divide that by the number of samples and that'll give us just the fraction of our draws that were the color that we wanted. And that's gonna be basically the probability that's the frequentist um, you know, formula right there. Um, now let's run our function in line with our original problem. The probability of seeing a black marble by sampling from the box 100,000 times. Yep, so that's what it does. It says it, it, it plugs in, we want to find the color black uh, from this box and we already set the box up and it knows that the box has two bags and you know the probability of drawing black from one bag is this and black from the other bag is that. And then like just for like 100,000 times, it's gonna pluck random marbles from the sample space that we had handed it. Um, and then it's just gonna return us like how many of those 100,000 draws resulted in us pulling a black marble, which is gonna be 0.54772%. Sound good? Yep. Any questions? All right, so we got that. Um, okay, so exercise two. Suppose that now we add a third color of marble into the mix. Bag one now contains six marbles, uh, four black marbles and five gray. Bag two contains three and seven and five gray. Also, they have three colors now. The probability of grabbing the first bag from the box is now twice the probability of grabbing the second bag. What is the probability of drawing a gray marble from the bag according to the law of total probabilities? Yeah, it just seems like minor modifications to what we did above. Um, so yeah, just copy, paste, and modify it to estimate the probability that you just computed and check your work. Um, yeah, yep, that's exactly what they did. They just pasted it in bag one for marbles now for this array, they have black, white, and then they added gray. So now there's three possible choices for you to make. And then they added the probability for it also right at the end, there's a five out of 15 chance. And they also modified the other ones because now there's 15 marbles in the bag. So there's four out of 15, six out of 15 white, five out of 15 gray. Um, and yeah, really the key is that like the probabilities are in the same sequence as like the numbers to which they correspond. And that's really what helps NPRandom.choice make a choice and the probability of it choosing that choice is determined by the corresponding probability that occurs you know, at the same sort of sequence number as where you pass in the color. Right. Um, same thing for bag two. Probs does the same thing, just adds the probabilities, ups the denominator. Um, so, and then in, when it comes to box, it has the bags and it adds in bag one, bag two, but the probabilities now, it's gonna, it's gonna change them. So there's, you know, um, the first bag is twice as likely as the second. Uh, so yeah, that makes sense. There's a one out of three chance that uh, you will get. Why uh, is two. it two out of three when there's only two bags? Because there's a, okay, so, so look, it says the probability of grabbing the first bag from the box is now twice the probability of grabbing the second bag. So for some reason, even though like instinctively, if you have a box with two bags in it, there's really no way there's a higher chance of picking one bag or the other. But for the purposes of this experiment, they're saying, let's just assume that like, you know, in this box, every time you reach your hand in, you know, the chance that you'll pull bag one is twice as high as the chance you'll pull bag, bag two or whatever, right. Um, so, and to account for that before, we had been saying that there's an equal chance of getting bag one or bag two. So we had just done uh, the probabilities as one out of two and one out of two. But now since bag one has twice the probability of bag two, um, you just have to think about it. We know that the probability of pulling one bag or the other is equal to one. So now we just have to find a way, how do we divide those probabilities such that the probability of getting one is twice as much as that of getting two. And the only way to do that is, is to assign, there's a two, two out of three chance that you'll get uh, that bag and there's a, there's a one out of three chance that you'll get bag two, right? Because then two is now twice as much as one. Right but the total is the same. And if you add those two together, you'll get one. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So then we just do that and then we do sample barbell and we and then we run the same experiment again. 
same function. Um, yep. I don't even think you have to rewrite the function. I think you could just, oh no, because you're choosing a bag. Yes, you do because you 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 have to you have to choose a bag first, and then the probabilities of the bags have been altered. So, which is why now this function first you pick when you when the the function that pulls one marble from the box, the first thing it does is it selects a bag from the box, and and because the probabilities of the bags have now changed, uh, we're just going to write that in again. Um, again, I don't think you have to do that because we were doing the same thing, and we were passing in the list, which modified the list. We could have done the same thing. Anyways, so yeah, so you first you pick a bag and then uh, you, you choose a marble from the bag that you picked before and that's just one draw. And then the second function, you use the first function to pull marbles a thousand times. Uh, and then, you know, just you put them all in a list. You do the list comprehension right here, which is gonna pull a thousand marbles using the first function, put them in an array, then you compute the fraction and this is gonna be the sum of the marbles array where, where the value of it is equal to the color that we passed in, sum that up, divide that by the total length, uh, total number of the samples, and that's gonna give you your probability. It's kind of like a long process just to get to one third when you can see that in the, the line that says box that says, that gives you a one third in the code. No, 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 because this is the probability that you will pull a gray marble from the box. Whereas this one, and, and are you talking about this line? Right. Yeah, that line is, is calculating, or it involves the probability of pulling a bag, either bag one or bag two. Okay, right. Right? Um, but it's not instinctively apparent just looking at it, because we want to see, well, what's the probability that we'll get a gray bag, a gray marble? And it doesn't matter if the gray marble that we pick is from bag one or bag two. We just want to know, I have a box with two bags and some marbles in each bag. I want to see what's the chance that I'll pull a gray marble um, just if I pull a random bag and then I pull a random marble from that bag. Um, I think it's just a coincidence that it came out to a 33% chance um, that you'll pull a gray marble. But you really would have to do the math to really get to the odds of getting a gray marble. Um, because I don't think it, it, it's not something that you can sort of instinctively tell. I mean, think about it. Well, if you, if you said like bag one is twice as likely as bag two, mm -hmm. so you double all the, the odds in the, in the bag one, and then you compare it to the bag two, you might right. come out with one third. Right. And, but you, yeah, and that's, what, that's what the function ultimately achieves. But the probabilities are different for each bag, right? So if you go up here, it says bag one now contains six white, four black, and five gray whereas bag two contains three white, seven black, and five gray. In a sense, you're right, because the probability of pulling a gray marble from either bag is five out of 15, because right. there's five gray marbles in each. Um, but still, the probability of pulling bag one is twice as much. And off the bat, you can't really be sure how that's gonna throw off the probability for the whole. Um, and, and, and like, so that's why you sort of go through the process of actually, you know, figuring out um, and then you get 0.3, but I don't think that you could determine the probability of getting a gray marble just looking at this information up here. Like you would really want to walk through the math to get a solid answer. Um, yeah, just up here, I don't know. 